Canadians across the country circulated through the polls on Monday, September 20th, as they placed their votes for this year's federal election. Throughout the summer, we have watched a rush campaign as leaders tried to pull Canadians in their direction. Issues like climate change, job security, Afghanistan and vaccine mandates are just some of the central points in this year's election. As most of the votes are still being counted, it seems that our current minority government, liberal government, has been swapped for a similar, if not the same, liberal minority government. I'm Julia Cosby and joining me to discuss the 2021 Canadian federal election are my fellow hosts, Ava Blackwell and Simone Vanni. Thanks for joining me today, ladies. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. What is your reaction to the election results? All right, I guess it's safe to say that not exactly surprised. Um, somewhere I think we saw the gain for Conservatives supporters, but then eventually they were not swayed. So here we are back with a Liberal minority. Yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised either. Uh, I am surprised at how poorly the NDP did. Um, I think a lot of people are shaken by that. A few like minor things I'm surprised about, but overall, we sort of predicted this. Well, six uh, six hundred million dollars well spent, and if we can get a <laughs> few uh, more TikToks from Jagmeet Singh, I think it will all have been worth it, right? Oh yeah, please, so, <laughs> please, we please. need some more of those. <laughs> Uh, so, as of now, Canada seems to be headed towards a minority government. In your opinion, are we likely to revisit the polls in another two years? I think so. I think Trudeau's still going to be very greedy, if that's the word, for that majority. So I think he'll call an election as soon as he can legally and try again for that majority. Yeah, I guess third time will be the charm. <laughs> yes, I think I, I was hearing that he was saying, uh, Justin Trudeau was saying that in 18 months from now, if he doesn't gain a majority government, that he will be putting forward another election. So do you think the results will be any different if he does put forward another election? Uh, no, I don't think the voters are comfortable with him having a majority. They don't trust him to have a majority. So no, no matter when we go back to voting, it's I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, we've shown him twice as Canadians uh, that we don't trust him with the majority no. government or his party. Um, I, I have no idea if voters will even have the patience for this next time to re-elect him even in a minority. Mm. He has two years though, if he, you think yes. about it. He has yes. two years to try again and good luck Trudeau. Yeah, if you come through on some of your promises. Yeah, it may maybe. happen. It may happen. Now, this year's election saw a disappointing outcome for the Green Party, specifically the Green Party leader, Annemi Paul, was unable to secure a seat in her own riding. What factors do you think led to such a dismissal outcome for the Greens? For me, I think it was more of a lack of campaigning. Um, I was reading somewhere that she didn't really visit many ridings, or even her own for that matter, until the night before. So that might have it something to do with it, as if she's supposed to be a present face and she wasn't there. Yeah, I heard the least sort of noise uh, out of her, even though I did like a lot of what her platform was saying. I, I didn't, I had to search it out specifically. Yeah. So, yeah, and like same. you said, we were discussing before the panel that you said uh, she didn't come until Sunday night to the places yeah. where she was the most popular. So I feel like a lot of her voters were feeling a little bit ignored. Plus, she was right. She was she was running out of a liberal stronghold, mm -hmm. which is says a lot. I mean, I'm not sure what she was thinking per se, but I'm not sure if you guys heard that she was kind of also pointing fingers towards her own party and uh, less support from them. And she was talking about how, as like the first black woman, first woman of color, and first Jewish woman, she just didn't have that much support from her own party, which goes to say a lot too. Mm. Enemy Paul was not the only party leader who was unsuccessful in obtaining a seat. PPC party leader Maxime Bernier was also unable to win a seat. Moreover, the party was unable to win a single seat across the country. At the same time, his party did see an increase in the popular vote with 5.1% of all votes. In your opinion, how did the party do and what factors led to their outcome? I think they did surprisingly well. I'm personally very happy for them, but a part of me just wonders if voters went towards them just because they wanted to steer away from the liberal conservative drama that was going on. 
Yeah, I feel that it gave voters who were sort of undecided a place to go. Um, and, and Julia, I know you have thoughts on this as to how it served as a warning for some of the members of the Conservative Party. Did you want to touch on that? Well, I, I feel like this election, um, if you really uh, watch driven interviews taken on the streets or talk to people on voting day, you would find that it people weren't necessarily voting for the party that they truly believed in. It was more so voting for the party that they're trying to not get another party in. Mm -hmm. it, it was kind of like that dodge, like a bit of a dodge game to not get a certain party in, so I'm going to vote for this party. and. Uh, with the PPC this time around, they were a lot more successful, but um, there were some areas where if they were not a party or if they didn't exist, then the part, uh, their votes would have resulted in a conservative, um, conservative elective official winning uh, certain ridings. So you could, you could even say that with NDP, with a uh, liberal, if their party didn't exist, then you would see more success for the liberal party. <laughs> so, so basically what you're saying and what I'm hearing is that basic, if the People's Party of Canada didn't exist, it would have resulted in a completely different government that we would, look, we would be looking at. No, I think it would have resulted in the exact same results. So with those ridings, um, even if the Conservatives won all of those ridings, the Liberals would still not have a majority and they would still be in a minority government. So uh, I, I think it would have been the same result, but it's kind of showing a bit of a red flag to the Conservative Party. If they want those votes from the PPC, they're going to have to change their views on a few different things to gain back those votes. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I like your thoughts on that. Meanwhile, the NDP didn't perform as well as they thought they would. What do you think about the future of Jagmeet Singh's leadership? Aside from more followers on TikTok, I don't know. I actually, I really don't know. I, I think it's hard to say. Um, rumor is that he wants to create a whole new NDP, and at this point, I just want to wish him good luck for that. It's kind of hard to say what's what's in store for him. Yeah. As of Tuesday, September 21st at 10.30 a.m., Liberals have 32% of all votes, whereas the Conservatives have 34% of all votes. However, the Liberals have 46.8% of electoral districts. In your opinion, is the first-past-the-post system reflective of what Canadians want? Uh, I guess it's hard to say. Mm -hmm. I mean, the numbers are speaking for themselves. But with the system, the Liberals are still holding on. So I, wonder, I just wonder how many people are thinking that their vote has gone to waste in that sense. Yes, I, I only know from the conversations that I've been having and looking at the landscape, like you said, Simone, it's very hard to tell right now, but I know that most of my circle in Toronto, they're a mixed bag right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and then like a bit of an older generation on the east and west coasts and uh, rural Canada, they're all a little bit disappointed that conservatives didn't get more power. So building off that, how can we improve our voting procedures? Well, I don't know about you, but I went to go visit my voting polls th at three different times uh, during the election yesterday. At one point, the wait was over two hours. At another point, it was all over 45 minutes. And then when, and I didn't have that kind of time to wait in line. Mm. Uh, I ended up going back a little bit later uh, in the evening, closer to when polls were closing. And I was able to get in, the lines were a little bit um, shorter. So I only had to wait 45 minutes. We need to do something about that. I understand that there is restrictions in place because of COVID, but more uh, accommodations needed to be made so that people could actually get into a, the, the polls to vote. I think <laughs> fair and square, very simple, right? In that sense, then maybe they should have a couple more days for advanced polling instead of, I, I forget how many it was. I think it was just three days this? Yeah. I think it was just Saturday, Sunday, Monday this year? And making advanced polling more accessible to people because mm. it was hard to source out. I'm um, like, I mean, for me, it's traditionally been more convenient to just go down the street to, to the college at where I, I vote traditionally, mm. and then to like register for advanced polling and go through all that. But do, even just to talk about the voting system, if yeah. we don't have the first past the post system, what exactly? What else exactly can we implement to see it, to see that change that we want to see or? For that matter, as Ava, you were saying that people were disappointed to not see conservative come in. So maybe if we had a different voting system, then we may have seen conservatives come in instead with a minority. But 
regardless it'd be a change in leadership. Many have accused Prime Minister Justin Trudeau of calling this election as a power grab for a majority government. How have these statements impacted the outcome of this election? Clearly it hasn't. I mean, we have the results in front of us. Clearly someone somewhere is doing something right for the Liberals. I I think that in uh, Canadian systems, you're right, Simone, and I think that in Canadian culture, sorry, we look at power grabs as maybe a bad thing or unfair, but in many other cultures, uh, that can be seen as a power move or something that should be uh, respected. So maybe that's influenced them, those types of voters, in such a way as to vote for him. Fair enough. <laughs> what was the most <laughs> notable aspect of this election for you? I think it was just fun to see it as a whole. Um, I forget the amount you said. How much did they, you said that they wasted? 600 million. Wasted yeah. or spent? Spent, or <laughs> sorry, wrong spent, word. <laughs> wasted. I mean, mm. potato, potato. <laughs> but it, it's been fun to see them trying to scramble to get their campaigns up. They did the best they could, I guess, if you ask me. But hopefully, everyone had great ideas on what they want to see. Hopefully, they all can come together and implement the change they all can see since it's a minority now so everyone has a say in something yeah it was nice to see uh what the parties all sort of agreed upon uh and what they didn't agree upon and it was sort of interesting to see everybody come out and it was sort of like a very combative like hit and react and react and hit it was like it was an exciting boxing match to watch and that kind <laughs> of <laughs> very fast paced uh a little frantic but also you know well paced i enjoyed watching it um <laughs> It was very entertaining. I, I think boxing match is the best way to <laughs> describe this whole election from <laughs> yeah. day one to yesterday. I felt like it was really interesting to watch uh, two things in particular. One thing was all the parties I feel like kind of shifted left a little bit this time around versus the last election, just in their viewpoints and different things that they decided to uh, bring to the forefront. And the second was different different elements of media we saw. Like, for example, you guys brought up Jagmeet Singh and TikTok. Sorry. We're seeing uh, different politicians use use social media more liberally. You're seeing on different groups. There's uh, there's all these uh, different party groups now that they're not using the liberal or conservative party name, but they're using names like Kenneth Proud and uh, they're, they're having their own Twitter accounts where they're commenting on everything. Now this has been around for a long time, but we're seeing things like TikTok, which is fairly new and wasn't, I don't, uh, I think it was called Musical.ly probably the time that, um, the last election took place. So we're seeing all these different changes and uh, these parties getting more involved with social media and using these these different elements to, to really push their parties. So that's one thing I found interesting about this time around. And I'm very interested to see how they'll, they'll use all of these different medias and how they'll go about a lot of different things for the next election. No, that's fair enough. Yeah. I think the bigger question is, should they be using it? Like, or maybe using it carefully. Well, they've used traditional media in the past, wh whether it be newspapers, television, radio commercials, why not social media? Yeah, yeah. fair enough. I, I just think it you uh, a cautionary moment is like, what's gonna age well? Um, I think that, yes, it's good to be using social media. It's a great way to get to a new and younger generation of voters and to help them get informed about every party's platform mm -hmm. it's 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 a great tool but again with any tool you have to use it carefully thanks Ava and Simone for your insights today that was fun yeah thanks for having us it's always great to do these panels and thanks to the viewers for joining our panel discussion today this has been your host and moderator Julia Cosby and you're watching the international news channel don't forget to like comment and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest news see you next time